Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about jailbreaking. Now it's going to be split into two different segments. Up first, we're going to talk about iOS 12 and whether or not said firmware will inevitably receive a jailbreak. And then we're going to delve into 11.3.1 and the jailbreak that's on the horizon for said firmware. In fact, there already is a developer exclusive iOS 11.3.1 jailbreak. More on that in a little bit. But first I wanted to highlight the fact that we're going to focus on iOS 12 primarily in today's video simply because that's the next major installment to Apple's iPhone operating system and that's where hopefully jailbreaking will be headed in the future. Now be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up if you're as excited as I am and if you're also pumped that I'm back creating content for the channel. This is only my third video back however so please be sure to bear with me. It's going to be a little bit awkward. Hopefully I'm going to try to keep the awkwardness down but I know it's a little bit hard for me just being back on camera after over a year of being off camera and if you're new to the channel be sure to click the subscribe button below and ding that notification bell so you're informed anytime I release jailbreak content for the channel or Tony does. All right, so up first, let's talk iOS 12 and jailbreaking. Will we get a brand new jailbreak for iOS 12 ensuing its public release, presumably this September? Well, to answer that question, we've kind of have to go back and analyze jailbreaking's history and how it's evolved. I'm going to make it relatively brief and split said history into three main segments. First, we have the jailbreakers of old, which included individuals like Muscle Nerd and Geohot and teams like the iPhone dev team that gave us tools like Red Snow and of course Lime Rain from Geohot, as well as so many other tools. Now those were just individuals and collectives that felt it important that individuals need to be able to customize their devices. So we got tools on a regular basis. It was also very early in the history of the iPhone and the iPhone operating system being iOS. So things were relatively easy compared to how they are now for creating a jailbreak utility. There were so many more bugs in the system that could be exploited and there were hardware bugs too, which is why we actually got jailbreak so frequently. For those of you who've been on the scene for years, you will remember that Red Snow was updated basically every time there was a new firmware release and that was because we actually had a hardware based exploit that was discovered by Geohot, first introduced in Lime Rain and then later rolled into Red Snow. Now after that period, once we started to hit iOS 7, we saw the evaders come onto the scene and this is where we start to kind of transition into the second sequence in jailbreaking's history. Now this is when jailbreakers started to focus on the monetary component of jailbreaking. The evaders initially tried to actually accept patronage from a company to include something in the Chinese version of one of the evasion jailbreak utilities. After receiving public backlash however they rolled back that decision and jailbreaking just continued until Pangu came onto the scene. We actually saw that transition to the second evolution in jailbreaking's history fulfill itself because both Pangu as well as Taiji were focused on the monetary components related to jailbreaking. For us using the English utility, we might not have noticed it, but that doesn't mean it wasn't there. For the Chinese version of the jailbreak, the teams actually did receive compensation for including third-party piracy software for Chinese users, again, in the Chinese version of both Pangu as well as Taiji's utilities. However, everything started to change after iOS 10 and we went into what I like to refer to as the third stage of jailbreaking. It went from something that was highly professional, slick, and worked like a well-oiled machine into something that's kind of Frankenstein together by the community. It's really interesting to kind of see this transition play out and to view it from the broader picture as I have been for so many years because usually industries don't function that way. They start out being community driven and then they go toward the more commercialized aspect of it. We're not seeing that this time around. We're seeing a total flip in the opposite direction and that's presumably because not only has it gotten harder to actually jailbreak but the monetary component has slowly faded. So they no longer have the same incentive to create utilities and we haven't really heard anything major from Pangu. They did tweet out relatively recently but they weren't actually focused on jailbreaking whatsoever. Instead, they were focused on what seems to be security research. 
and they haven't actually been on the scene active in a jailbreak capacity in quite some time. But they did demonstrate that they could technically jailbreak iOS 10 during its beta stages that had everybody pumped for an iOS 10 jailbreak from the group because they, while they were focused on the monetary component, were probably one of the best jailbreak teams in history. They created fast, fluent, and awesome jailbreak tools that were enjoyed by millions of individuals. And interestingly, Taiji also seemingly faded from the scene. We haven't received word from them in even longer than it's been for Pangu. And now again, we are in the third phase, which is community driven, where it takes the efforts of multiple individuals and collectives to actually release a new utility. And again, it seems like the actual community itself is much more involved in the creation of tools. So iOS 11 is about to get its second big jailbreak wind with the release of an iOS 11.3.1 jailbreak tool. And we could see something very similar for iOS 12. However, since iOS 12 is so focused on performance and stability improvements, it will also likely see a number of under the hood security updates as well that could thwart potential jailbreakers. So not only do I anticipate iOS 12 will be significantly harder harder to jailbreak than firmwares of years past. I also think that it is going to be more difficult because we no longer have that, um, I want to say monetary incentive, but we do have community passion and drive. Overall though, since Pangu and Taiji have left the scene, jailbreaking is not going to be as important because if we view it as the hobby of certain individuals rather than a primary means of livelihood, which was presumably what it was for Pangu and Taiji, then of course that's going to be on the back burner for the individuals who are focused on it. However, hopefully we'll see the same level of involvement with iOS 12 that we have for for iOS 11 and notable figures like Ian Beer and Coolstar will continue to be on the scene and help us satiate our needs to jailbreak. Okay, so you might be asking, well, now that I have all of that information, all of that background, what can I do to ensure that I can jailbreak or to ensure my best possible odds of jailbreaking if and when an iOS 12 jailbreak is released? That's a great question. As always, the best practice is to remain on a lower firmware. In fact, as low as possible. If we use iOS 11.3.x for a case study, we know that there's going to be a jailbreak for iOS 11.3.1 for use by the public because there is an exploit for 11.3.1 that has been patched by the subsequent release being iOS 11.4. So it pays to be on 11.3.1 right now versus 11.4 if you're interested in jailbreaking. So when iOS 12 is released, if you happen to be locked out of iOS 11.3.1, which will presumably be the final iOS 11 jailbreak, then just stay on as low of a firmware as possible. Possible. Of course, things will change and the situation will shift. It's dynamic, not static. So there will be announcements such as possible exploits for new firmwares into the future. So be sure to just stay subscribed to the channel because I'm going to let you guys know when to update, if at all. Of course, if you don't hear word from me that it's safe to update, then just stay on as low of a firmware as possible. Right now, the best firmware to be on to ensure that you can jailbreak is 11.3.1. If you get a device that's brand new in the future that's locked into iOS 12, again, just don't update unless you receive word to. And hopefully we will get an iOS 12 jailbreak at some point. It's going to be community driven though, keep that in mind. So that means that the actual passion behind it, while it is there, it's going to be just that, a passion. So it's going to take second place for the people who are actually working on it. It's probably not going to be their primary focus or priority. And it's almost certainly not going to be out once iOS 12 is released to the public. Just be sure to stay tuned though. I'm going to keep you guys fully updated on the situation as it unfolds. Hopefully we'll have some more information in the future and don't get too sucked into the hype surrounded by new jailbreak demos because there are probably going to be developers and maybe even teams, who knows, we could hear from Pangu and Taiji again. Hopefully they come back, fingers crossed, but don't get too sucked into any demos released by anyone because until actually pushed to the public in some form of utility, they remain just that 
theoretical demos. Now let's talk about iOS 11.3.1 quickly. There is actually another video on the channel that I will have linked down below in the description and it should have been on the cards earlier in this video as well talking about iOS 11.3.1 and giving you the latest as of recording this video today. Now there is going to be a public jailbreak. There currently is a developer jailbreak for the firmware, but you do need a developer account from Apple. I highly recommend just waiting until the public thing is released because A, not only is it a developer only jailbreak, meaning you definitely could encounter complications that would unfortunately force you into restoring and potentially even losing your jailbreak if 11.3.1 is no longer signed at the time of your potential issues, but B, we do have official word that there is going to be a hopefully more stable jailbreak out to the public at some point soon. Hopefully Electra will be updated by Coolstar. He does state that he's working on it, but it does need a secondary exploit to actually function without the need of a developer account. So I'm going to keep you guys completely updated and apprised on the situation as it unfolds. If you do have a developer account, again, I highly recommend avoiding updating unless you are a jailbreak developer, then it makes perfect sense because then that way jailbreak devs can update their utilities. But if that does not pertain to you, then again, just avoid it because it's only asking for trouble. The last thing you guys want is to be forced into a restore, especially since 11.3.1 is no longer going to be signed soon, which would force you into iOS 11.4 and thus locking you out of the jailbreak. Now, just to wrap this video up, I wanted to mention again that this jailbreak for 11.3.1 is almost certainly going to be the last iOS 11 jailbreak. Be sure you do not miss out. As of recording this video, you can still downgrade. The signing window is open and you can also update if you are on a lower firmware. Down below in the description, as well as in the cards right now, there will be a video linked that will teach you how to either downgrade or update if you are on a lower firmware. But keep in mind that tutorial is time sensitive. So if you're watching this video at a later date, it might already be closed because Apple has to maintain that signing window for the downgrade or update process to 11.3.1 to actually function properly. So this is your last chance. This is an absolutely critical warning that you either downgrade or update now if you want to be included in the iOS 11.3.1 jailbreak when that drops. Now, I hope you guys liked this video. Again, just be sure to stay tuned for complete info pertaining to jailbreaking. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.